two bolts start at the same point and speed away along the courses to form a 110 degree angle. So here's a point and I start from that point. And then it says, if one boat travels at 24 miles per hour and the other boat travels at 32 miles per hour, how far, how far apart are the boats after 30 minutes? So after 30 minutes, you've traveled, well, if you're going 24 miles per hour, that means you've traveled 12 miles. And if you're going 32 miles per hour in 30 minutes, that's half an hour. So that means you've traveled 16 miles. Does that make sense? And then it's a 110 degree angle. So I'm gonna say this one is 12. I'm gonna say this one is 16 and here's 110 degrees. And what they want is this line in green. So they wanna know how far apart is that. So this looks like a straightforward law of cosines problem. So X equals the square root 16 squared plus 12 squared minus two times 16 times 12 cosine of 110 degrees. And that's gonna spit out some answer. I do not know what answer that is. At least I can't remember it. We did it yesterday. Uh, make sure your mode is in degree mode. I'll put it one more too, too many E's. And there it is, whatever that spits out. Cool or not cool? Okay, next question. Uh, number two, this one's a super important one, hint, hint. Uh, it says, we're having a pumpkin cell. The pumpkins will be displayed in a triangular region in the parking lot with sides 40, 70, and 100. Each pumpkin takes about three square feet of space. And it says about how many pumpkins can we display? So I'm gonna draw, draw some random triangle here. We're gonna call that 40, 70, and 100. It's not a right triangle because 40 squared plus 70 squared does not equal 100 squared. Uh, so to figure this out, you have to use Hero's formula. You could also uh, use law of cosines to figure out an angle and then use two sides, uh, plus that included angle to figure out a for, uh, area of this triangle. But first, uh, I'm just gonna use Hero's formula, guys. So Hero's formula states that the area of this triangle or any triangle is the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, where S stands for the semi-perimeter. Semi-perimeter, which means add them all up and divide by two. So let's see, S equals half of uh, 40 plus 70 plus 100. So S equals half of seven and four, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, that's 110 plus another 100, that's 210. Half of 210 is 105. So my area is the square root of 105 times 105 minus 40 times 105 minus 70 times 105 minus 100. Type that in. I don't remember what we got. Uh, Alemán, do you have that number off the top of in your paper there? Can you hook me up with it really quick? Just, you can just type it in and I can see it pop up over there. All right, so she told me 364 plus some decimal. I don't remember, 364 dot, dot, dot. And then if that's the area, what you're gonna do now is uh, you take the three square feet and, uh, oh, 1,092, sorry. And then you take the three square feet and you're gonna go the number of pumpkins is equal to 1,092 uh, square feet divided by three because each pumpkin takes up three square feet. And you're gonna get, you're gonna uh, round down and you're gonna get 364. And I guess I should put the approximate, uh, but you're gonna run down to 364 pumpkins. And the numbers could be off. I don't remember the exact numbers, guys, but something like that. Is that what you got, Taylor? Okay. Uh, then the next one says, find the measure of the mid-sized angle. Uh, so the mid-sized angle is, well, the segment, uh, well, we find the, the mid-sized segment, right? Uh, so 100 is too big, 40 is too small, so 70 is in the middle. Uh, but I mean the middle is the middle one from 40, 70, and 100. So we gotta find this angle up here. So to do that, you're gonna use law of cosines. So if we wanna figure out this angle, then you put the 70 on the outside. 70 squared equals 40 squared plus 100 squared minus two times 40 times 100 cosine of some angle. And then we just do math. So 70 squared is 4,900, 1,600, 
uh, 10,000, 100 times 100, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, minus 2 times 4 is 8, 8, 0, 0, 0, cosine theta. Hopefully I did that correct, guys. And I'm just going to take out my calculator here. So there's my calculator. And I'm just going to go ahead and start typing these numbers. Okay, let's see. 4,900 minus whatever this is right there. So I'm going to subtract the 40 squared plus 100 squared. And I can see that I didn't type the 40. Second, insert four. All right, and we get negative 6,700. So negative 6,700 equals negative 8,000 cosine theta. So cosine theta is equal to 6,700 divided by 8,000. Negative divided by negative is a positive. And yeah, you can reduce that, but I would just leave it. And then you just go make sure that your mode is in degree mode. And you just go arc cosine. I think I'm still in degree mode. Nope, I didn't push enter. Look at all the mistakes. Enter. So arc cosine, second cos, 6,700 over 8,000. And I push enter, and there it is, guys. And I remember, yeah, yesterday we got that answer, 33.122 uh, or 123. Put a degree, and there it is. That's fine, miss. Repeat that answer. Uh, 33.123 degrees. OK. Hmm. I think I did it differently, and I got an answer that's like, really it's like close but it's not that so i don't know if um i don't, I don't see any mistakes uh that's what i got did you put cosine theta um Campbell? it's because i so i did i didn't use hero's formula for number two i used law of cosines and then the area formula so i already had a value for i already had that angle the the angle that was across from 40 feet was 18.1948 degrees. This so you just used law of signs and I did like the cross multiplication thing. And so I got 32.7313, which is mm. like close, but slightly different. So I don't know if that's just because I was rounding in other places. Oh, so yeah. It's probably because you were rounding, uh, but it should work. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking it's because you were rounding. Let's see, area equals one half um, 40 times 100 sine 33.123. Let's see if we get, bless you. Let's see if we get that 1,092. 0.5. Times 40 times 100 sine of this guy. I'm not rounding. Yeah, I got 1,092 divided by three. Um, three to four pumpkins. Sam, because because I was using a different method, I got a different answer. So would it be? Like, would that be okay, or would I, or should I go back? Uh, don't round. If you don't round in the beginning, you won't have uh, large deviations. Okay. So store it to uh, memory in the calculator. Okay. Sounds good. You know what I mean, or not? But like the equals the little. Yeah, just store it like that. Thirty-three point one two two, or the answer that you got, the eighteen degrees or something. Store that to uh, register. I mean, if it's really close, like within a degree, uh, I'll probably check it anyways and, and see if it was a rounding error. But in calculus, when you guys get to it next year, it needs to be perfect. I know it's lame, but I think that's how it is in the math world. We want, per, uh, you know, as close to perfect as possible. 
Francisco. All right, here we go, guys. Uh, in triangle ABC, the measure of angle A is 2x, and the length of AB is 3. The length of AC is square root of 3 over 4. If sine x is 1 7 what is the area of the triangle? And it says you will need to use your double angle formula. So area of a triangle is 1 half AB sine C. And since we already have that, let's see, A, B, C, not to scale. So let's see, A, B is 7, A, C is square root of 3 over 4, and angle A is 2X. So I have everything I need. So area is 1 half uh, 7 times square root of 3 over 4 times sine of 2x. And it tells us that we're going to have to use a double angle. Well, yeah, because I see sine 2x. So sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. So um, I'm going to come here on the side here, and I'm going to write what sine x is, which is 1 7. So I'm going to draw a triangle or a reference triangle. I'm going to call this x, and I'm going to write 1 7, because sine x is 1 7. Opposite of our hypotenuse. So 7 squared is 49. 1 squared is 48. So cosine x must be the square root of 48 over 7. Uh, and then 48 can be broken down. So let's, let's break it down 48. Uh, 16 times 3. 16, 32, 42, 48. Yeah. So the square root of 16 is 4. So 4 square root of 3. So cosine x is 4 square root of 3 over 7. So now, guys, I'm just going to type it in. 1 half times 7 times square root of 3 over 4 times, what is sine 2x? This guy. 2 times sine x, which is 1 7 times uh, 4 square root of 3 over 7. And let's see what cancels out, guys. Uh, this half and that two go away. That seven and that one seventh go away. Uh, square root of three times square root of three is three. Four times three is 12. So I see 12. Uh oh, did I mess up somewhere? Uh, oh, yeah, seven times four. 12 over seven, 14, 28. So 12 over 28, and then three goes into, four goes into 12 three times, and four goes into 28 seven times. Mr. Chavez. Yes, ma'am. I got lost after you said cosine x. Why did we do that? So I can figure out what cosine x is for the double angle. Because the double angle formula is 2 sine x cosine x, and I need a oh, cosine x. OK. So then that's when you plugged in. Oh, I'm sorry. You had broke it down, and that's why you plugged it in for the sine 2x. Yes. This okay. is the. Uh, uh, this is my two, that one seventh is your sine x, and that four the cosine three x. is your cosine x. Oh, okay. Are we okay, guys? Guys, I, I'm not really having fun uh, staring into a wall. Can at least one of you come to camera, please? Because uh, I, I don't get any feedback from just looking at this, and it's kind of discouraging me, TBH. Uh, thank you, miss. Just at least one of you. All right, so I here we go. I try to come back on, but if it starts glitching, I might have to go off because it was like getting really laggy behind before. It's just that it's not fun when I'm just talking to myself, you know? Like, I feel like I'm just staring into a wall, and then it just becomes discouraging, and then you kind of, I just, you get depressed and you know, it just, the cycle just continues. Uh, so, all right, here we go. The question number four, the shortest side of a triangle with angles 50, 60, you can come in. Okay. The shortest side of a triangle with angles 50, 60, and 70 have length ninth. What is the length of the longest sides? So just draw a random triangle guys, not to scale, uh, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees. See, I can already tell just with you guys being here. Uh, now I got more energy now. Uh, so it's it's funny, psychology is weird. Uh, and it says the shortest side of the triangle with angles 50, 60, 70 have length nine. So, so length nine is the shortest. So I'm gonna put nine here. And it wants to know the what is the length of the longest. So if 50 degrees made the nine, then 70 degrees makes the longest. Does that make sense, guys? So we're gonna write, here's what we're gonna write, law of signs. We're gonna write sine 50 degrees 
over nine equals sine 70 degrees over X. And that just becomes that, you're just gonna cross multiply. So X sine 50 degrees equals nine sine 70 degrees. And then to get X by itself, you just divide by sine 50. So X equals nine sine 70 degrees divided by sine 50 degrees. And we did it yesterday, but I don't remember what number we got. I wanna say it was letter A, but I'm not sure. Was it letter A? I look, okay, awesome, perfect. All right, and then question five, it says don't use a calculator on this one. So this one, try not to use a calculator. I remember there was one that we deleted the calculator thing. Uh, so I want you guys to remember that this uh, sine 15 degrees is the same thing as sine 45 degrees minus 30. You don't have to choose 45 and 30, you can choose other numbers, uh, but I just like to choose the, the smallest ones possible that can get you there immediately. You could have chosen 60 degrees and 45, uh, but this, uh, this one, 45 minus 30 is 15. And then we just expand it. So what are we doing? We're just expanding, guys. Sine A minus B, sine A, cosine B, minus cosine A, sine B. So sine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees, I'm just gonna substitute sine 45 degrees, cosine 30 degrees, minus cosine 45 degrees, sine 30 degrees. And then we're just gonna plug in the numbers, guys. So sine 45 is square root of two over two, cosine 30 is square root of three over two, uh, minus cosine 45 is square root of two over two, and then sine 30 is a half. So it comes out to square root of six over four minus square root of two over four. So square root of six minus square root of two over four. Mr. Chavez? Yes. Do you have done it by doing sine, like the half angle formula? I wouldn't. I wouldn't okay. use the half angle formula the way these are written, but yes, you can also get it through the half angle formula. You might have to do more work though. Okay, how, so how do you know when to do which one? Because cause like it, I looked at that and I saw, oh, 15 is half of 30. I didn't see the like 45 minus 30 thing. Like I wouldn't I, have thought of that. But, if uh, I see something that looks like an answer that uh, sine half would have given, because that if I remember correctly, the half angle formula for uh, sine 15 would have been one minus cosine of, uh, let's see, that's a 30 degrees. But it doesn't look, see how, like if I were to substitute in numbers, I would have some giant square root with stuff inside of it. And this has two square roots. And I'm sure you can transform that to look like that, but why, why bother, you know what I mean? Like, or we can try it, okay. like, let's, yeah. let's try it. Let's try it real quick. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's fun. Let's see if we could have done it. So co uh, what did we say, half angle? So let's see, sine of half theta is equal to plus minus square root, uh, one half, one minus cosine theta. So did I write the, the derivative correctly, or the derivative, the formula correctly? So let's see, square root one half, one minus cosine 30. Cosine 30 is square root of three over two. So now, let's see, uh, one is gonna turn into two over two minus square root of three over two. So I'm gonna have, see, let me write it over here in, the, in blue. Uh, square root one half, two minus square root of three over two. Two times two is four, so I'm gonna have uh, square root of two minus square root of three over four, square root of four is a half. So see, I have a half, square root of two minus square root of three. All right, from there, how do I get from here to here? Um, That's, I, when I, the reason I had this one start is because I got to there and then I was like, I don't know how to do this. But oh, so I know. Can, that yeah, we can manipulate it, but maybe this is a topic for another discussion, like where we do this to this. Uh, because I, I feel like we should probably go fast right now so we can do as many problems. And uh, if you want to stick around afterwards, we can mess around with this expression to get it to look like this guy. Does that make sense? Yeah. So remind me, I'm going to put an asterisk on it. And then later on, we'll come back to that and we'll see if that can, we can make it look like that. We can. I think I got to multiply by two over two. And yeah, I think we can, but let's not work. I think if we multiply by the difference of squares, okay, let's not talk about that right now. All right, let's go fast, or let's try to go fast. A string running from the ground to the top of the fence has an angle of elevation of 45. So here's the ground, and then here's my fence. 
So angle of elevation is 45 degrees. Uh, the string is six feet long. What are the distance between the fence and where the string is pegged to the ground? So they want to know this distance right here. So one way to do it is 45, 45, 90 triangle. And another way to do it is um, Sokotoa. Uh, whichever way you like, guys, it doesn't matter which route. So if I tell you that the hypotenuse is n squared of two, so you could say n squared of two equals six. And what you want is one of the sides or one of the legs. Uh, so just divide by square root of two. So n equals six divided by square root of two, multiply by square root of two over square root of two. So six square root of two over two, uh, six divided by two is three. So three square root of two. Cool? Okay. You could also do Sokotoa, guys. You could have also said uh, sine or Sokotoa. And you could have said uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, that's CAH. So cosine 45 degrees equals X over six times six times six. Six cosine 45 degrees equals X. Six times square root of two over two equals X. Two goes into six three times, that's an X. Three square root of two. It doesn't matter how you do it, guys. Uh, you'll get the same answer. All right, question seven. Suppose that you're headed towards a plateau 45 meters high. So here's the ground and Here's my plateau. And if the angle of relation to the top of this plateau is 21 degrees, so here's where you're at. So 21 degrees from there to there. How far are you from the base of the plateau? So they wanna know this distance down here. So now that you know that that's the distance you want, and you know that this plateau is, suppose that you're headed towards the plateau 45 meters high, it's 45 meters. Again, we're just gonna use Sokotoa, guys, uh, tangent. Or you could use similar triangles, doesn't matter, guys. So I'm gonna use tangent this time. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So tan 20, actually you have to use uh, tangent because uh, of the 21 degrees, it's not a perfect angle. So you can't use special triangles, like a 45, 45, 90. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so 45 over X. So times X times X, so X tan 21 degrees equals 45. Let me ask freshmen to see if they know. You guys know how to do this problem, guys? X equals 45 over 1021. It doesn't look familiar to you guys in geometry. We have two freshmen here, so, okay. Yeah, yeah, this question's pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, type that into the calculator and, oh, actually, you don't have to type it in. There it is right there. Cool, guys? All right, uh, number eight, draw triangle ABC. I think here's where we got to. Oh, no, we got to in no, question 10. Uh, draw triangle ABC. And I remember drawing this wrong last time, but they say the BC is the base, so we're gonna keep it like that. The measure of angle A is 30 degrees. None of this is not to scale. If a perpendicular is drawn from B to side AC, so here's my perpendicular, that means that I have a right angle right here. And the height is two centimeters, so that perpendicular height is your height. What is the length of side AB? So I wanna know that length. So you can use the 30, 60, 90 triangle, uh, n, n squared of three, and two n. So my hypotenuse, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the hypotenuse. That two n or the two centimeters, that's your short leg. So then that means my hypotenuse, which is the 90 degrees has to be four. See? That makes sense, guys? Okay. No, I'm confused. You I just- I was about to ask, can you re-explain that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you see this triangle here in green? So I'm gonna write it here again. Remember, it's not to scale. So this angle here is 30 degrees. And this is my short leg. So this is supposed to be 60 degrees. It obviously, it's not to scale at all. I wanna figure out that length here. Well, according to my little formula that I have, if this is 30 degrees and this is 60 degrees, then this is my short leg, n. There's my long leg, n squared of three. And there's my hypotenuse, two n. See, so I already got two centimeters here. So to get the hypotenuse, I just multiply it by two. If they wanted the long leg, it would have been two times square root of three. But they don't want the long leg, they want the hypotenuse. That's not the only way to do it. There's, you can also use sine, cosine, tangent, uh, Sokotoa. Do you want me to do it that way too, Miss uh, Parker, or no? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna erase the green stuff, if that's okay with you guys. Um, if you did the Sokotoa route, uh, 
So I'm gonna write Sokotoa. You guys remember Sokotoa, freshman? Oh. So if you did the Sokotoa route, so here's that triangle again. And here's A, and here's my 30 degrees, and here's two. And of course, remember, I want X. With respect to the 30 degrees, the two is opposite, and the X is hypotenuse. So which one uses opposite and hypotenuse? The sine. So you would write sine 30 degrees equals 2 over X times X times X. So now I have X sine 30 degrees equals 2, and then divide by sine 30. X equals 2 divided by sine 30. Now, hopefully you remember, or you can just type it into the calculator, but hopefully you remember that sine 30 is a half. So how many halves go into two? Four. What'd you think, Parker? I like both ways. I just, when you put that tiny triangle inside the big one, that's when I got confused. I was like, because you put like three different colors. Okay, I'll try to minimize the colors, miss. I got to be careful with all this power that comes with colors. With great power comes great responsibility. Where does that come from? Is that Star Wars? All right, so here is what I told fifth period. Here's what I told fifth period, Spider-Man. Yeah, sorry, miss. Yeah, with great power comes great responsibility. I knew it was one of the Marvel. Not that, wait, Star Wars is not even Marvel. I know, I'm lame. You know what, let's just stick to, to Matthew. Um, so this question, guys, you this one comes out all the time on the SAT, all the time. Maybe not a quadrilateral. Sometimes it's an octagon. Sometimes it's a pentagon. But And there is a formula to finding an area of a regular polygon. Uh, and I believe that area formula is like one half apothem times perimeter. But do you guys remember what apothem means? Like, see, I, I yeah, don't even worry about that. Here's what I would do. Find the area of a regular quadrilateral and scribe in a circle of radius six. So here's my circle. And uh, if I have a quadrilateral, that means I have a square. Uh, it doesn't look like a square, it looks like a rectangle. Sorry guys, I got a D in art, so give me a break there. Uh, so here's what I would do. And it doesn't matter the shape. If it's a pentagon, well then draw a pentagon inside. Um, here is all those triangles that you see and I did such a bad job, such a bad job. One, two, three, those four triangles should all be the same. And I did a really bad job of drawing them, guys. Really bad job. This is called the central angle. Since there's four angles and I'm dividing them into four equal pieces, you can go 360 divided by four and you get 90. So this is 90 degrees right there on quadrant in for triangle one. I know it doesn't look like it because I drew it really crappy. But if you draw it really awesome, let's see if I can draw it. Let me see if I can even draw a perfect circle. Look, uh, that looks like a perfect circle. And then, oh man, see, I still drew a rectangle. There we go, that looks better. If, if I were a perfectionist drawing, a perfection drawing, or I can't even talk now, see? Now you can see that they all look the same. Okay, now these angles are all 90 degrees. If they tell you that you have a pentagon, then you would go 360 divided by five. If they tell you that you have an octagon to find the central angle, you would go 360 divided by eight. That makes sense, guys? Area of a triangle is always one half A, B, sine C, where A and B are the sides in between your angle that created that angle. So that means it's this and this. I know that the radius is six, so you can just go right, up, right off the bat and go one half, six times six, sine, of 90 degrees. So sine of 90 is just one. So this turns to 36 divided by two, which is 18. That is the area of one of these. How many triangles do you have total inside? Yeah, just four, multiply by four. Uh, 18, 20, 40, 60, 80, 72. And you can do those questions all the time like that. You have a pentagon inscribed in a radius uh, inside a circle. You have an octagon inscribed in a circle, whatever the shape may be. I think we got all the way to number 11 with this period. Given triangle ABC, the measure of angle A is 60 degrees. 
So let's draw another triangle, A, B, C. So angle A is 60 degrees, and the length of AB is 6, and the length of AC is square root of 2. What are the lengths of side BC? Oh, law of cosines. X equals square root 6 squared plus square root of 2 squared minus 2 times 6 times square root of 2 cosine 60 degrees. So let's see, 36 plus uh, 2 is 38 minus 12 times the square root of 2 cosine of 60 is a half. And then half of 12 is 6, so 38 minus 6 square root of 2. What do you think, Parker? You just talk really fast. I, I, I understand what you're saying. It's just like I'm trying to understand and like right at the same time. Oh, it's, I'm warmed up because all these questions, I did them yesterday uh, during fifth period. So uh, that was the first time I did them. So because I did them yesterday in fifth period, I'm like really fast right now. Uh, but I'm about to slow down because I think we only got to, what was the last question we did, Aleman, number 11? 12. So after question 12, you'll see that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slow down significantly because I haven't done any of those yet. But all these are fresh in my head because I did them yesterday. All right, ABC is triangle with an angle A is 30, angle B is 135, BC is 10, find AC. So again, we just sketch a triangle ABC. Uh, let's see, angle A is 30, and of course, none of these are to scale. I did it, I did the same thing yesterday. Angle B says 135, and look, that does not look like an obtuse angle, uh, but it's okay. And then BC is 10. Uh, find AC, X. Uh, that looks like law of sines, guys. Sine 30 degrees over 10 equals sine 135 degrees over uh, x. And these are perfect angles, so we don't necessarily need a calculator. x sine 30. And I know some of you guys can already take a shortcut right off the bat. 10 sine 135 divided by sine 30. And sine 135 over sine 30. Let's see, 10, sine of 135 is uh, square root of 2 over 2, and sine of 30 is a half. So let's see, that 2 cancels out with that 2, and you just multiply, so 10 square root of 2. Do you guys want some Doritos? Here, catch. Oh, sorry, guys. No problem. I have a banana here too, if you guys want the banana. Okay. All right, now this is a one that I think uh, I scratched out. Uh, it says don't use the calculator, but then I think I scratched it out. All right, okay, so yeah, we use a calculator because the number is like pretty big. Uh, ABC is triangle AB, so here's another ABC. Not to scale. AB is 9, BC is 14, and AC is 12. And it says find cosine A. So we're just going to use law of cosines because they want uh, cosine A. They want that guy right there. Or you know what? Let's just call it cosine A. They want cosine A. So 14 on the outside, 14 squared equals 9 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 9 times 12 cosine of A. So now all you're doing is getting cosine A by itself. Uh, I don't remember what 14 squared is. What was it? 169 equals 196. Oh, yeah, my bad. I'm dyslexic. Uh, plus 144 minus 2 times 9 times 12. I don't know. Anyone hook me, hook me up with that? 316. 316? 216, right? Okay. And then you're just going to subtract uh, or 81 and 144 from 196. 196 minus whatever 81 plus 144 is. I don't know what that is. I mean, I guess I could figure it out real quick. Okay, So I get negative 29 equals negative 216 cosine A. 
and then divide by negative 216. So you get cosine A equals 29 over 216. All right, here we go. Uh, I didn't do any of these questions, the next ones. So I will be going significantly slower because this is the first time I've done them. Well, first time I've done them in a while because you know I've done all of these. Uh, determine the angle X in the triangle given below where AB is eight, BC is 11. And it tells me to use law of sines of the double angle formula. Uh, what do they want again? Determine the angle X. Okay, so I want the angle X, so I'm gonna write sine x over 8 equals sine 2x over 11. So I'm going to expand. So here we go, guys. 11 sine x equals 8 sine 2x. And then you need your double angle formula, so I'm going to put it over here. Sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. So here we go. So I'm going to write 11 sine x is equal to 8 parenthesis, and I'm substituting what sine 2x is for 2 sine x cosine x. 2 sine x cosine x. 8 times 2 is 16. So 11 sine x equals 16 sine x cosine x. And now notice that I have a sine x here and a sine x on the left side as well. So those you can cancel out. So now, if you divide by 16, you're going to have Cosine x equals 11 over 16. Uh, I'm going to get the x by itself, so you're going to do arc cosine. Arc cosine of 11 over 16, and there it is. Arc cosine 11 over 16. What do you think, Parker? Did I go a little slower on that one? Kind of. Not as fast, though. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the next one. In triangle ABC, so it looks like I have another triangle. It looks like this year I loved triangles. Uh, angle A measures 52 degrees. And uh, edge angle C is 62 degrees. And BC is length 8. Find AB. Okay. This looks like law of sines. Sine 52 over 8 equals sine 62 over x. And you're just going to solve for x. So x sine 52 degrees equals 8 sine 62 degrees. So x equals 8 sine 62 degrees divided by sine 52 degrees. So I start looking for that. So 8 sine 62 over sine 52. 8 sine 62 over sine 52. There it is, guys. We're okay on that one? Yes. All right. Question 15. It says, an isosceles triangle has a vertex angle measuring 150. Oh, that's a, I like this question. I like these type of questions. The T equal sides have length Q inches. What is the length of the base in inches? All right, so let's draw an isosceles triangle not to scale. This is 150 degrees, and then I have an angle and an angle that they're both the same here. That's Q, and that's Q. They want to know the length of this side of the base. Okay, so and the thought triangle is angle 150, 60, 70, 80. Okay, so that means that this must be 15 degrees, and this must be 15 degrees. Are we okay so far? So what I am seeing is, uh, what am I seeing? I'm seeing law of cosines. If I want to figure out what x is, x equals the square root q squared plus q squared minus 2 times q times q. And because I'm using law of cosines, I have to use that 180 there, cosine of 150 degrees. So let's see if we can do our algebra here. Q squared plus Q squared, that is 2Q squared. Minus 2 times Q times Q, that is still 2Q squared. 
but cosine of 150 is a negative square root of 3 over 2. We're still okay, guys? Negative times a negative is a positive, so we're about to change that to a plus. And then this 2 and this 2 go away. So here's what I now have. Square root 2q squared plus, let's see, q squared with a square root of 3. Notice, and I'll slow down because maybe I'm going really fast. Notice that both of those terms have a q squared. So I can factor that out, guys. So I can write it like this. Square root q squared, 2 plus square root of 3. And now that I have it written that way, the square root of q squared is just q. So now I look for that. And there it is. I like this question, hint, hint. What's up, uh, Taylor? Wait, Mr. Chavez. Yeah? The answer choice E different from, oh, never mind. I can't read. Sorry. Yes, logical. Sorry. Yes. All right, you're good. You're good, miss. Ready for question 16? Given triangle ABC with AB is 3 and BC is 3 squared to 2, the measure of angle A is 135. How many choices are there for a measure angle C? Guys, there will never be more than 2. So delete 4, delete 3. It's either going to be 0, 1, or 2. And Wait, I, what was the question asking? How many choices are there for measure angle C? I guess let's, let's talk about why it can never be 3 or 4. So... Let's draw this triangle. I don't know if I have enough space. If not, I'll use the part of above 17. So draw a triangle, A, B, C, not to scale. And they tell you that A, B is three, and they tell you that B, C is three square root of two. The measure of angle A is 135. And how many choices are there for angle C? So they wanna know, well, how many choices are there? Like how many answer choices can there, can there be for theta? So this is a law of sine. So you're going to write sine 135 degrees over 3 squared of 2 equals sine theta over 3. Or sine C, sorry. Are we okay so far? All right, so check it out. Cross multiply. So we're going to write uh, 3 squared root of 2 sine C equals 3 sine 135. And then you're going to divide by 3 squared of 2. So I'm going to write it here, guys. Sine C equals 3 sine 135 over 3 square root of 2. Okay. Sine 135 is a perfect coordinate. Hopefully you remember. It's right here. Square root of 2 over 2, negative. Square root of 2 over 2, positive. Since it's sine, it's positive. 3 times square root of 2 over 2 over 3 square root of 2. So check it out. Ready, Miss Parker, for the magic? I mean, it's not really magic, but the 3s yes. cancel out. The square root of 2s cancel out. So what you have is this. Sine C is equal to a half. So that's all you got. Are we okay so far, Parker? I understand how you got there. Okay, perfect. That's all you need to, that's all you need to understand at the moment. All right. In the unit circle between zero and 360 degrees, at what angle does angle C equal a half? There's one in quadrant one and there's one in quadrant two. Oh, no, because, it, yeah, yeah, 30 and 150. Yeah, at 30 degrees, sine 30 degrees is a half, and then again at 150 degrees. So the most answers you'll ever have are two, but do not but do not click two just right off the bat. you got to check it with the angle that they give you. 
can you be 30 degrees on this one? Well, look, one of the angles is already 135. Remember that the biggest, the, the, all your three angles in the, in the triangle have to sum up to 180 degrees. So can the, does the 30 check? Yeah, the 30 works. 135 plus 30 is still under 180. Does that make sense? So that one works. Yes. What about the 150? No, the no. 150, heck no, it's not going to work. Delete that one. So the only answer is one on this one. So this is why it works. So this is why, Ms. Parker, when I say it will never be three or four, is because those are trick answers. Those are the answer choices that you should be deleting right off the bat. Those are the worst answers. Does that make sense? Yes. I was just confused why you just, I mean, I guess it makes sense for four, but when you start crossing, I was like, okay, but why? Yeah, because when you do the inverse of sine and the unit circle, there's only two answer choices where sine of that angle is going to equal a half. That's the most it'll ever be, two. So it's either going to be zero, one, or two. Cool? Yes. Okay. So now let's go to 17. Now, hopefully you guys remember these, and they're not too bad. Uh, they want to know which of these statements are equivalent to this. Recognize or look or notice that there's only one term on each. It's just cosecant, cosine, cosine squared, secant, sine. So what feels right about this one? Common denominator. So multiply this sine by sine over sine. When you do that, you're going to get sine squared theta over sine plus cosine squared theta over sine. And now you can just add them up. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta over sine. Hopefully you remember the Valentine's formula. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to? One. There you go. So now I have one over sine theta. And then one over sine is just a reciprocal function. One over sine theta, what's the reciprocal of sine? Cosecant. And that's it guys. Hopefully you guys remember those. What do you guys think? Are we still okay? Yes. Let's go to number 18. I really love number 18, guys, this one here. Uh, hopefully you guys recognize this. Uh, and if you don't, let me rewrite it. I don't know. Does that help? <laughs> Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put side note. This is similar to this. X to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. Okay. If, uh, if this still does not make sense to you, it's similar to this, x squared minus 2x plus 1. So the one in red, that you can factor out real quick, at least I hope, from your algebra two days. That's just x minus 1 times x minus 1. So let's see, from there, hopefully you learned in algebra 2 that, oh, okay, you can factor anything that is in this pattern because it is the same thing as saying x squared squared minus 2x squared plus 1. See, I don't know that, no, okay. Uh, I can, look, here's what I'm trying to say. Happy face squared minus 2 times happy face plus 1. This in black can be written as happy face minus one times happy face minus one all day okay. long. Mr. Travis? Yes. But it has the exponent of four. So yeah. what if we write it as like cosine squared parentheses squared? I, well, no, you're just gonna, you're just gonna go right to the factored form right off the bat. I was just trying to get you guys to see that all of these are similar. Uh, so if it looks like this one, you can just go right off the bat to x squared minus 1, x squared minus 1. So for this, yeah, if you wanted to, you could write it as cosine squared theta squared, and that is cosine of the fourth minus 2 cosine squared theta plus 1, if you wanted to. Uh, but you don't have to. You can just go right into recognizing that this is very similar to that one. And what do we say that one in blue was? That one in blue was, uh, where are you? Right here. I should have kept it as blue. X squared minus 1 times X squared minus 1. 
So then this guy can be cosine squared theta minus one times cosine squared theta minus one. Are we okay with that guys or no? Okay, and then hopefully you remember that cosine squared theta minus one is the same thing as sine squared. Because the Valentine's formula is cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. So sine squared times sine squared is sine of the fourth. What do you think, Parker? That makes sense when, yes, I got it. <laughs> you just started doing some stuff on the side and then you could get me. Sorry, maybe I'm going too fast or putting too many ideas together. But you guys, hopefully you guys can see that algebra two is pretty important. Maybe I should give my exams to former algebra teachers or to all the algebra teachers in the middle school and all that good stuff. All right, anyways, on this one here, uh, Ms. Taylor, are you doing okay so far? All right, on this one here, what would I do? One minus 10 squared theta over one plus 10 squared theta plus one. I'm really tempted to turn that one into one plus 10 squared over one plus 10 squared. Can I do that, guys? There's so many ways to do this, but this is what I'm tempted. Is one plus 10 squared over one plus 10 squared the same thing as one? Yep, so now I can put them together. One minus 10 squared theta plus one plus 10 squared theta over one plus 10 squared theta. I can see that these 10 squares are going to cancel. And now I have two over one plus 10 squared theta. On the side, and I'm gonna to try to go slow guys, the only thing I know is that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one. If you have your formulas, then you can just look at them real quick. The only way to get a tan is if I have sine over cosine. So I'm gonna divide everything by cosine. And look what you get. You get one plus tan squared equals. Thomas? Yes, ma'am. How do we get two if it's one minus plus one? Uh, the 10 squared canceled out, miss. It's one plus one. Oh, so it's not, oh, okay, okay. No, you're good, miss. That minus is in front of the tan, so that negative 10 squared plus 10 squared. One plus 10 squared is equal to secant squared, guys. So this is two over secant squared theta. So the reciprocal of secant squared is cosine. I didn't hear you at all. What'd you say, Taylor? These questions, I feel like I understand it when you're explaining it, but then I don't know how I would replicate it on my own. Like, I don't know how I would see that and go, oh, okay, well, I just need to make it have a common denominator and then put it all together and then use secant. And like, I don't know how I would get to that. Order. Yeah, I think, I think uh, with these, we have to have a game plan. And maybe I think uh, a reason that maybe we're not super strong is probably because we weren't in, in you know, we weren't here in class uh, working on these, all these problems for like more practice and everything. Uh, so it might be a, an issue because of the pandemic, but at the moment I don't have, well, maybe I shouldn't tell you guys this, but at the moment, at least for the senior exam, I don't have this question in particular. Uh, I have something very similar, but not, not as lengthy as this. I have basic ones in there. Also, this is just a um, side note question. How long is our exam going to be? Because this exam is like 40 questions long, and I don't know if I can do 40. That, like, we've already been on here for like. Oh, that's because we're explaining everything in detail. I think you're, you'll be a lot faster when we're not talking about it. Uh, that and the questions I ask uh, are going to be very simple. Uh, like three of them are the exact one. Look, look at the question number 20. Question 20 is going to take seconds. Okay. 
So I put a lot of these questions in there on the exam. As a matter of fact, two of the exact questions are exactly like this. So you just got to literally just recognize cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So uh, hopefully you guys remember uh, that this is cosine A plus B because that has this property, cosine A, cosine B minus sine A, sine B. Hopefully you have that written somewhere. If not, I'll provide a formula sheet. Uh, so there it is. So then that means I'm looking for 9x plus 3x, 9 plus 3, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this has to be cosine 12x. And even with all that talking, that probably took like 30 seconds, but you guys can probably do it in like five. Cool. All right. Uh, okay. So these are the ones that take kind of a long time. Uh, so these questions are the ones that take a long time. Uh, so first and foremost, you got to you know what that formula is. So cosine x plus y is cosine x, cosine y, minus sine x, sine y. And then the next thing you got to do is figure out what you have. So they give you cosine x, so check mark, and they give you cosine y, so check mark, but they don't give you sine x and they don't give you sine y. So you got to figure those out. So I'm just going to draw or a sketch a right triangle here. Here's angle x. And they told me that it was one ninth, one nine. That's for cosine. So how do I get the upon? How do I get the opposite? Nine squared is eighty-one. One squared is one. Eighty-one minus one is eighty. So this is the square root of eighty. And that breaks down. Let's see. I'm trying to think of, uh, I guess ten times eight or no. Is there a perfect one? 16 times 5, right? No. Uh, uh, the calculator says 4 square root of 5. Yeah, 16 okay. times 5. What was, I, what was I thinking? Yeah, the square root of 16 is 4, so 4 square root of 5. So there it is. So now from there I have, let's see, cosine x with 1 ninth that was given. Sine x is 4 square root of 5 over 9. Okay, now let's do the other one. I'm going to color code it. I'm going to color code it in with blue. Uh, remember that angle Y is in quadrant four. That's the important part, guys, to put it in the right quadrant. Uh, one over 11, so this is one. This is 11. Here's the theta or the angle Y. So, well, really it's this angle, but you use a reference to help you out. So here we go. Uh, 11 squared is 121, 1 squared is 1, so this is the square root of 120. Help me out, Ms. Parker. What's the square root of 120 that the calculator simplifies it to? 2 square root of 30. Okay, so from there, let's see. we got cosine y, that's 1 over 11, and we got sine y, which is a negative 2 square root of 30 over 11. We're finally ready, guys. Here we go. I'm just going to insert into all of these. Cosine x. Cosine x is 1 ninth. Cosine y. Cosine y is 1 over 11. Minus, let's see, sine x. Sine x is negative 2 square root of 30 over 11. And then it says sine y. Sine y is, oh, did I mess up? I think I did. Because I see 1 over 11 twice. Cosine x, 1 ninth. Cosine y. Where did uh, I mess up? Sine x. Yeah, right here. I messed up right here, guys. All wrong. Uh, sine x. 4 square root of 5 over 9. And then sine y. Negative 2 square root of 30 over 11. Now we're correct. I think. Are we right now? Yes. Yeah. Cosine x, cosine y. Cosine x, cosine y, yep. Uh, sine x, sine y, sine x, sine y. Yep, we're right now. We are correct now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So here's what I get. 1 over 99, negative times the negative is a positive, plus 4 times 2 is 8, 30 times 5, what's that? 15, so 150, square root of 150. Don't worry, we'll break it down right now. Over 99. Okay, Ms. Parker. What does your calculator say for the what's the square root of 150? Five square root of six. 
Okay, take that five, multiply it by eight. One over 99 plus eight times five, what's that? Five times 50, 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, 40. 40 square root of six over 99. So let's look for that answer. One plus 40 square root of six over 99. Those do take a long time, guys. Uh, at the moment, I have two of those. I didn't hear you at all, Taylor. Can you say that again? Did anyone hear her? <laughs> okay. No. Uh, yeah, type it. <laughs> Sorry, miss. Oh, well, I just want to have a good test. So uh, I, I could ask 10 questions, but I just want you guys to have a good test overall, not a bad test, you know? Um, are you guys getting tired? I can, I can just create the video for the rest if you guys are getting tired. Can we like find a question we haven't done yet? Because some of these are just like the same strategy. Yeah. Do you have a particular number that you want to hit me up with? Um, I don't know. Yeah, the, the rest aren't too bad. The rest look fairly simple. Uh, they just look cumbersome because it's a lot of arithmetic. Uh, let me tell you what questions are not going to be in there. Ooh, I like this one. Uh, that one's going to be in there, guys. Uh, so maybe I'll do it right now in a little bit. Um, this one is in there. So is this one. Or, all right, uh, look at, um, that, those are in, those are in because I have to, those are brand new ones. Okay, 38, I do not ask that. It's an easy question actually, but I don't ask it. Uh, 39, man, I really wish we would have gone to this. I don't ask that. Third, uh, 40, I don't ask that. And that's an easy one too. 41, I don't ask that. Those are all easy questions too, by the way. It's just too bad. I, I feel guilty now that I look at this for all the questions we didn't get to. Uh, you're gonna see this one. I already changed the numbers, so I, it's safe to say. You're gonna see that one, but with different numbers. Uh, and I'm gonna be asking for the center of something uh, I'm actually going to be more specific. Uh, I'm going to tell you either the center of the ellipse or the center of the circle. Um, so I'm going to be asking for that. I will be asking for the vertex of a parabola. Uh, this is a parabola that opens up in the x direction. Uh, I have another one that opens up in the x direction, just not this one exact. Just not this exact question there. Um, this one here. Make sure. Maybe we'll talk about it, but it, it's. It's not going to be a well. It's it's pretty important. Um, let's go over the questions that I that I know for a fact are already in there. Uh, the one that I said that I really really liked, this one here. So this one was also in a previous exam. I don't know if you remember, and I think it's the same question in that exam. I just copied it and pasted. Uh, it says evaluate sine five pi over twelve, and it says five pi over twelve is half of a specific angle. So I would like for you guys to know that this is sine half five pi over six. So remember, Miss Taylor, when you said, how do I know when I use a half angle or when I do sine A minus B? Well, on this one, I'm literally telling you that it's a half angle. So I want you to use that half angle formula. Sine of half of A is equal to plus minus square root one half one minus cosine of A. Does that make sense, guys? So then what do I want to see? So here's what I want to see. Uh, first and foremost, 5 pi over 12, I want you to recognize that that is less than pi over 2. So that's in quadrant 1. So it should be positive. 
So I want to see you guys delete all the negative ones because you know that you're in quadrant one. I would like for you to do this without a calculator as well. And then from there, I want you guys to say, okay, well, half angle, one half, one minus cosine of five pi over six. So I would Can like to explain how you knew to delete the negative ones. Oh yeah, five pi over 12, this angle is, is in quadrant one because uh, it's less than half a pi. If the number in the top would have been six pi over 12, that would have been half a pi. So five pi over 12 is in quadrant one. And everything in quadrant one for sine is positive. I mean, really everything in quadrant one and quadrant two is positive anyways. Does that make sense or no? Are you sure or are you just saying that? No, yeah, it does make sense. Okay, so here we go. And then I'm just gonna go one half, one minus, and then hopefully you remember what cosine of five pi over six is. It's a negative square root of three over two. Uh, if you have your unit circle with you, I guess that's fine. And then I would like for it to see the arithmetic of this, guys. One half and then two over two uh, plus square root of three over two. Maybe you don't have to take this long. Maybe you can uh, make it fast, right, or do it faster. Uh, two plus square root of three over two. And then uh, two plus square root of three over four. And because you have the square root there, law of exponents, one half, two plus square root of three. Okay, so when you do the half, you could just multiply by the denominator. All right, what? I was uh, asking what for the, when you have the half, you're just multiplying by the denominator. Wait, but then you, Hold it back, huh? Well, I'm lost now. I just did log exponents. I just did uh, square root of two plus square root of three over square root of four. Oh, you added the square root. Okay, I didn't see that. You just kind of moved to the next step. Well, yeah, I just did, uh, anytime I have something over a square root like this, a radical, you can just go square root of A over square root of B. You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, we're good, Parker. We're good. Keep asking. Ask all the questions, Miss. We're all good. I want to make sure that we clear up confusion. So wherever there's confusion, just let me know, and I'll try my best to clear it up. How do we feel, guys? Do we feel okay? All right. Let's do. I think we can probably handle one more, and then because I don't want to keep you guys here. All, all day and all night, because uh, I know you guys need to have dinner with your parents, or I would like for you guys to have dinners with your family. So let me look at the questions that we have left and see. Let's do one more that I think is important. I think you guys can do this one. Uh, I actually don't even ask a tan 2x one, but I do ask a double. I do ask either a sine 2x or a cosine 2x, but they're all the same. You're just going to use your formulas for those. And then this is the same as earlier. Let's do one that we haven't done that looks different from others. Go to use a sum or difference. No. Okay, number 31. This will be the last one we do, guys. And then the rest I'll... I'll I'm going to just redo a video and record the rest here. All right, so number 31, make sure you guys can do questions like this. I do want to see work for this. What do I want to see? I want to see if you guys can factor. So this is similar to 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 equals 0. So when you guys were in algebra 2, I would like to know that you guys can do this, 2x and x. And then there's only one way to get four. Well, actually there's two ways, four times one and two times two. Uh, if we do four and one, remember, look, we're trying to add up to a seven. So the four has to go there and the one has to go there. And that will work because two times four is eight and one times X is one or one X. And the difference between eight X and one X is seven X. So there's a negative, there's a positive. Do you see how we did it guys? Yeah. You, can, you can also factor by grouping. 
but I would like for you guys to be able to do that really quick. Since we know that those are similar, I want to see that you guys are writing to sine x plus 1, sine x minus 4. And then from there, you can say sine x equals 4. Well, this never happens. So you take that one out completely. But this scenario here will happen. Where does the expression 2 into sine x plus 1 equals 0? Well, we're going to solve. Move the 1. 2 sine x equals negative 1 divided by 2. Sine x equals a negative half. And then you ask yourself, in the unit circle, where is sine x equal to a negative half? And that's going to be in quadrant 3 and in quadrant 4. So hopefully you remember, in quadrant 3, that is 7 pi over 6. And in quadrant 4, that is 11 pi over 6. Cool, guys? Okay. How do we feel, guys? Do we feel okay? All right, guys. I don't remember where we left off uh, because I didn't record what we did in fifth period. Uh, I should have, but uh, I guess pause uh, the screen if you need to. Uh, here is uh, some of the questions, and if you have issues, let me know. I know we're all over the place here. It's because I was trying to explain uh, how something is similar to something, uh, but no big deal. Uh, if you find any of this confusing, please let me know. And I'm going to continue off where we left off, guys. Um, some of the questions that are similar, I think I'm just going to skip, guys. Uh, so like for this one, it says sine 2x. Uh, they're similar to all the other ones. Uh, sine 2x, you just look up this formula. And I'm going to give you a formula chart. chart. Um, so sine 2x is just nothing more than 2 sine x cosine x. And they already give you sine x. So And remember where x is at is between 180 and 270. So that's quadrant 3. So you just make a reference triangle, quadrant 3 there. And then here's angle x. And then negative 2 is right here, and then 7. And then you just find this leg here, and then that's how you're going to find the cosine. Just do Pythagorean theorem on that, guys. Uh, I don't think we'll have any issues on this, on these types. Uh, 23 is similar. Well, I guess we can do 23, at least one of them. So it says uh, find cosine 2a and sine half a. So for cosine 2a, guys, we got many options. So I'm going to go ahead and write the options that we have here. For cosine 2a, we have, uh, let's see, uh, we have cosine squared a minus sine squared a that we can do. Uh, we could also do, if you replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared, you have 1 minus 2 sine squared a, uh, which is probably the ideal choice because they give you sine a. And, of course, you could also do... Uh, replace the sine squared a with 1 minus cosine squared a, and you're going to have 2 cosine squared a uh, minus 1. Uh, but yeah, guys, so 1 minus 2, and then sine a in this case is 3 fifths. So 3 fifths, and we're going to square that. Uh, 1 minus 2 times 9 over 25. 9 times 2 is 18. So 18 over 25. And then I would just do common denominator with that 1. So 25 over 25 minus 18 over 25. And the difference between 18 and 25, 5, 6, 7, so 7 over 25. So that's what I would look for for cosine 2a. So that one has it, that one has it, nope, nope, and that one has it. So, so far we got those three options. Uh, and then next, for the sine half a, so the way you figure out that one, sine half a, that is just plus minus square root 1 half, 1 minus cosine a. And I'm going to probably do it in a different color here. It's probably better. And uh, so don't get confused with uh, what's in. All right. So there we go. Uh, so they tell us that angle A is between 90 and 180. So I'm going to put this here. Let's see. Actually, no equal sign. Just between 90 and 180. So between 90 and 180 degrees. So. If I take half of that, half of A, well, half of 180 is 90, and then half of 90 is 45. So angle half A is between 45 degrees and 90. 
that's going to put me in quadrant one, so it has to be a positive. So just from that, I can already delete that one. And, okay, I guess that's that one. And uh, I guess it looks like it has to be either this one or that one, right? So let's see which one it is, guys. So plus minus square root one half, one minus, what will we say cosine A was? Well, it is a three, four, five triangle, guys. So let's go ahead and write it out so you guys can see it. Um, 90 and 180. So that's quadrant two. Here's angle A. Well, the reality is this one, right? But we use our reference to help us out. Uh, so sine is 3, 5, so this is negative 4. So our cosine A, and I'll put it down here, is a negative 4 fifths. All right, so here we go. I put a negative like so. And we just continue, guys. Plus, minus, we already know it's a positive one, right? One half, one plus four fifth. Turn that one into five over five. One half, five over five plus four over five. One half, five plus four is nine. Five plus five is, uh, sorry, five over five is just five. I don't know what was going on with me there. Then we just multiply plus minus square root uh, 9 over 10. The square root of 9 is 3, so look for 3 over 10, and we got it right here, guys. All right, let's continue here, guys. Uh, this is just the same. You just use your composite argument property for that, guys. Uh, sine of x minus y is equal to sine x cosine y minus cosine x sine y and then you just draw your reference triangles and put a two-thirds in there and put a seven-ninths in there for the y uh, it's similar to question number number 21 so look how we did 21 it's similar to that guys if you have issues with it please let me know and I, yeah i can do it but i'm trying to cover as much as I can in one sitting here. So I, I kind of want to skip it, guys, if that's okay with you guys. Uh, the 25, is this, you've seen that one. 26, I'm not going to ask a tan one. Uh, I already deleted it. Uh, 27, that's similar to, the, to saying what is sine half x, but this time it's cosine. Uh, 28 is similar to 27. This one we did in class. Hopefully it looks pretty straightforward. Write it down, guys, real quick, or pause it. Um, really, I don't think I think we've pretty much covered everything. I think we've pretty much covered everything, guys. Uh, maybe this is the last one that we haven't really. All right, so let's talk about this one here. So this question here, guys, is pretty much uh, what pre is all about, uh, that something is sinusoidal, that something goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, so let's see if we can tackle it, guys. I think we can. Uh, so yeah, let's see what's up. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, guys, I had to get my calculator out real quick. All right, so here we go. At high tide at 8.15 p.m., the water level on the side of the pier is 9 feet from the top. At low tide, 6 hours, 12 minutes later, the water level is 13 feet from the top. Which of the following times is the interval water, in that interval, is the water level 10 feet from the top of the pier? All right, guys, so the first thing we got to do is, um, well, I guess we got to assign times, right? So we got to assign that, like, a specific time. And I know it's 815, but remember, in <laughs> when it comes to clocks, they only work in 12-hour intervals. So we probably should go to military time, Uh I think that would be better, maybe. Well, let's see. This is going into AM, so it's going to reset. So what's the best? All right. I'm going to call this time zero. I'm going to call that time zero. And then six hours, 12 minutes later. So 12 over 60. I believe that's uh, point 0.2, right? Second so quit. 12 over 60. Yeah, so that's uh, one-fifth of a... So we're going to say uh, 
Well, I guess we haven't have we even read it. Let's read it. At high tide at eight fifteen, the water level on the side of the pier is nine feet from the top. At low tide, six hours twelve minutes later, the water level is thirteen feet from the top. At which of the following times on that interval is the water level ten feet from the top of the pier? Okay, it's a good question, guys. I would delete the word high tide because it's going to get you confused because high tide with a low number and then low tide with a high number. So just re- delete that. Delete the high tide, low tide, and it makes will make better sense to you. So at 8.15, I have uh, um, 9 feet from the top. So I'm going to make a, a scale first. So I'm going to say here's 9. And we said that that was time 0. And then 6 hours, 12 minutes later. So that's going to be 6 hours uh, and twenty minutes, uh, 12 minutes. So that's 6.2 because it's one-fifth of, uh, of an hour, the 12 minutes, 12 over 60.2. So at 6.2, so I'm going to say 6.2 is right here. It, I'm going to be 13 feet. So I'm going to say here is 13. So there I am. So low and high. All right. And then it wants to know which of the following times and intervals is a water level 10 feet from the top. So the easiest way to do this, guys, is I'm going to make an equation. Uh, so let's see. First, we got to find. So I'm going to make an equation for that. So first, y equals uh, a cosine, um, let's see, b parenthesis theta minus c, or x minus c, close, close, plus d. All right, guys, so the amplitude, well, I guess let's find, let's find the midline first. The d is going to be equal to the middle between 9 and 13. So 9 plus 13 divided by 2, uh, what's that, 11? 13, 22, yeah, 11. So 11 plus 2 is 13, 11 minus 2 is 9. Yep, perfect. So the A is 2 because the 11 is the middle. And if you go 11 plus 2, you're at 13. 11 minus 2, you're at 9. So we got these two guys. Uh, the C, if we're going to be using the peak, if we're going to be using cosine, then the C has to be 6.2. And then I need the B. Uh, the B is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. Now, 6.2, guys, it, you might say that that's the period, but that's half the period. Because remember, the period is how long it takes to go from low to low or high to high. So double the 6.2, so that's 12.4. And you can reduce it, but I'm not going to. So my equation is Y equals, uh, let's see, what was it? 2 cosine 2 pi over 12.4 close x minus 6.2 close close all right guys so remember what i did i used 815 as my initial or my reference and then 6.2 hours later which is sometime out of like 2 a.m or something 2 a.m and something minutes so i want to find a a time interval where i intersect between 0 and 6.2 where i intersect 10 so 10 is like right here and i'm trying to find that time i'm and it's exaggerated here guys it's actually closer to zero than 6.2 so let's see, let's see where that's at, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and type this in. And in a little bit, we'll find the time. So y equals 2 cosine of uh, y equals enter 2 pi over 12.4. And then open x, x minus 6.2, close, close, and I didn't even include the uh, midline there, plus 11. Without that plus 11, everything's skewed down, right? Plus 11. Plus 11. All right, so let's see how we're going to look. Window... Zero and should we go all the way to yeah we're not twelve point four nah uh, let's go to six point five and minimum I'm gonna say seven and max I'm gonna say seventeen fourteen I'm gonna say fifteen and let's push graph. So let's see if it's true. At zero, I should be at a minimum of nine. So I'm going to push trace, zero, enter. And there I am. And at 6.2, I should be the maximum of, of, of uh, what was it, 13? Yeah. So trace, 
uh, 6.2, enter. So there it is, guys. It works. Uh, so now I'm going to go to Y equals, and I'm going to go to Y2, and I'm going to set that equal to 10. And yes, I know that I can set this equation equal to 10 and solve, but I think it's just easier to do it this way. 10, and I'll push graph. So there I am. I intersect right there. Second, calculate number, where are you? Intersect, 5. I don't know why that took so long, guys. Enter, enter, enter. And I intersect at 2.0666666667. So to figure that out, it's really simple, guys. So the 2 just means 2 hours, right? And then, so let's go to your home screen here. I'll push X. So I want to know what the 0.0000666667 0, 0, 0, 0, means. Uh, it just means that that's the percentage in minutes, or the that's 6.6% uh, of an hour. So I'm going to go, so I said that wrong the first time, right? 6.6% .6 of an hour, or 6.7% of an hour. There's 60 minutes in an hour, so I'm just going to multiply that by 60. So four minutes have passed. That's all it means. So two hours, four minutes have passed. Two hours, four minutes. From what? From 8.15. So let's see, 8, 9, 10. So 10, 19. And there it is. Pretty cool, huh, guys? All right. And then I think the rest, I think the rest should be pretty fresh, guys. I don't really see any issues with those. And then these I'm going to cancel. Cool. Very cool, guys. All right, guys. And the last but definitely not least, uh, I'm going to include logs in there. And I'm thinking about including a very special log because uh, PhotoMath can handle these like a champ. So I don't want to know if, you, if your app can do PhotoMath, guys. I don't know, want to know if your app can do logs. I want to know if you can do it. So please, excuse me, don't be using an app like PhotoMath, guys, for these. Uh, basic properties of logs, your product property, your quotient property, your power property. Uh, know that logs are inverses of exponentials. So you can just go back and forth. And in this situation, guys, I mean, I would like for you to know that 2 to the power 8 is 256. But in case you don't know that, um, you know, you could always use LNs to bring the exponent down. And then you just do LN of 256 divided by LN of 2, like how we have it here. So these are coming from nodes 29, guys. So make sure you know that. And then we got some properties. Uh, these are called their change of base properties. I do not see this in there. So... Uh, I know because I already typed out the, the nine weeks exams, right? So this is not in there. Not in exam. I am thinking about including something for bonus. And I'm thinking about maybe including something like... Uh, where are you? Something like example seven as a bonus. Uh, but I haven't decided yet. I haven't typed that part out just yet. I haven't typed any bonus out just yet. Uh, but make sure you know how to do questions like example six, guys. Uh, remember from the notes. And there's basic properties. I don't know if E is one. Hopefully you guys know that. Uh, example six might be a little hard because uh, you have to use a quadratic formula. But it's not out of the question. Um, something like example five and example four is definitely going to be in there. Like you should definitely be able to factor. And there will probably only be one or two of those. So I probably already gave it away which ones are going to be in there. Uh, but yeah, something that is factorable and you should be able to check the domain. So that's going to be, you should be able to check whether your solution is part of uh, your equation or not. Uh, you know, so check both answer choices. Uh, that and then last but definitely not least, or maybe it is <laughs> last and least, uh, vectors. But I'm not going to ask anything fancy, guys. I'll probably just ask for the modulus or the magnitude. Uh, both mean the same thing. Uh, so I'll probably just ask you for the magnitude. So I'll give you a vector and I'll say, what's the magnitude? Uh, find the value of, and here's the symbol for magnitude. So I'll probably just ask for that. Sometimes I'll put double uh, absolute value signs, or sometimes they'll just be a single absolute value sign. It doesn't matter, guys. They're both the same. So look at notes 30 and 29, if I remember correctly. Notes 30 and 29. 29 and 30, guys. So notes 29 and 30 should set you guys free. And there it is, guys. So uh, be ready for tomorrow's exam.
All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.